Hello friends. Thanks for joining me for this last installment of John in June. We have reached the last chapter and hence we have reached the last day of our social gathering around God's word. You know, we started this back in March. Uh, let me see. No, April. We started this in April with Psalms and Proverbs. And that was back when we were essentially quarantined, not uh, able to leave home. And so we did this in order to be able to connect, uh, but, but primarily to be able to connect with each other around God's word. And, um, and so I hope you've been encouraged and helped and blessed by this. I know I have. Uh, I know that it's been great to hear from other brothers in Christ. Um, it's been great to hear from you and to get to receive many encouraging insights and, and thoughts about this. So thank you for that. Um, and I just want you to know that should we go back into some sort of a, of a quarantine type situation, I would say it's very likely that we would do something along these lines again. But for now, especially with moving into phase three, uh, most likely happening this week, we will go ahead and, and stop um, doing our, our social gatherings around God's word. And um, yeah, so I wanted to say that I was really encouraged this last weekend. You know, John has been showing over and over again why we should believe in, in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Son of God. And he tells us that he wrote this in order that we would believe and have life in his name. And so this weekend, it was really neat to have uh, to sing together the Apostles' Creed or a song based on that. You know, I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. And, um, it, you know, we got to then uh, together affirm those ten wonderful um, mysterious things about what we believe in God and I just wanted to stand up and cheer when we when we say it said I do to the resurrection that we believe that when we said I do to the fact that we believe Jesus will come back for us and uh, it, it really was a lot like a like a wedding where you know Toby joked that I feel like we should be kissing the bride right now um, so so wonderful to celebrate those truths and to affirm them together it's so encouraging to hear the voices and to see these people that i love and respect affirming these same truths that we that we believe by faith um because right now you know we we have this confident expectation this confident hope but it's still faith one day we will not need faith but in the meantime we absolutely do and it's so good to be knowing that we are taking those steps of faith with brothers and sisters in Christ and not by ourselves. Um, so yeah, let's jump into John chapter 21. All right. So here we have the, um, essentially the reaffirming of Peter, the apostle Peter, because if you will remember Shortly before this chapter, he had, he had disavowed Jesus. How many times? Three times. Remember, he was brought into the, into the courtyard uh, of, of Pilate. Uh, no, of the, high t of the high priest, excuse me. And around a char charcoal fire, he denied knowing Jesus three times, starting with a servant girl that he was ashamed to even admit Jesus to a servant girl. Um, and then we see that John and Peter go to the empty tomb to explore that. And it says that, G that John was the one who went away believing that Jesus had risen from the dead. And so here we are with Peter, not yet restored to the position that he was in before as one of Jesus's you know, apostles and right-hand guys. And so, so Peter decides he's going to go to Galilee like he was supposed to. Jesus told them to go there and wait for him. But he decides to go fishing. I don't know exactly what that means. I mean, he was a fisherman. Don't know if that means he was kind of leaning towards, well, I guess I'm going back to what I used to do. Uh, denied Jesus. And, um, you know, I don't know where I'm at with him. So he goes fishing. Uh, 
he catches zero, they catch zero, right? And then Jesus shows up and once again, they're not able to recognize him for some reason. I think that's probably Jesus is doing. And they, he tells them to try the net on the other side. They catch 153 large fish, not just fish, but large fish. Why 153? I looked up several things. There's lots of different um, ideas. Nothing really is, oh yep, that's the, that's the one, that's the explanation. Uh, one explanation I like though is that at that time, um, on that time in that place, there was believed to be about 153 species of fish, and hence that could represent um, the peoples of the world, and that they were to go and be fishers of men to all the peoples of the world. But again, that is there's not a lot of uh, proof for that being the meaning. So. But it just goes to show you how John paid attention to the details and how that sticks with him when uh, when he wrote this. It was fresh on his mind. And so uh, they, they bring this in. Jesus provides the catch. He provides the harvest, right? And he provides the, the means uh, for bringing the harvest in. It says the net didn't tear at all. So, um, you know, it's kind of like, I believe it's pointing to the fact that he provides the, the ends and he provides the means. Um, so then Peter goes to him and Jesus is on the beach. And what is there? A charcoal fire. What do you think that's going to do to Peter? I think it's going to bring him back to where he was a couple days. Well, probably more than that prior to that, when he was around that charcoal fire denying Jesus. And so kind of similar to, you know, if you smell something and you're brought back to your grandma's house as a child, there's something that reminds you of some, some event. Uh, I think that would have happened for Peter. And so Jesus then talks to him and says, do you love me more than these? Likely he was talking about his, the fish and what he did before as a profession. Do you love me more than your old profession, more than your old life? Do you love me more than your life? And Peter says, you know I do. And what does Jesus do? He, he switches it to another picture, another analogy. Well, then stop fishing and become a shepherd. Feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. Three times he asked them. Three times Peter had denied him. And then three times... Peter responds to the affirmative, you know, I love you. And Jesus doesn't say, well, I hope you do. He says, okay, then do this on my behalf. Become an under shepherd. I'm entrusting you. I'm calling you and I'm entrusting you with this. And I think that would have meant so much to, to Peter and reinstated him as one of his right hand dudes. And, uh, and you've got more in this chapter. You know, you see that Peter's going to have a death that sounds awful, but will glorify God. The word there is glorify. And that's pretty amazing to me to think about one of the deaths of Jesus's disciples being a good thing, a thing that would glorify God. Um, you've got Peter still being Peter asking, well, what about John? You know, Jesus said, don't worry about him. Okay. It's not, it's not for you to know. Peter, I just see so much of myself in him, you know, from the jumping out into the water to try to get to Jesus faster, to being uh, a knucklehead in other ways, you know, for walking on water, but then getting scared, even though you're already walking on water, cutting off somebody's ear, you know, in just haste, but then denying him just a little bit later, just this up and down, up and down. Can't you see yourself in Peter? So I love... Peter here. I love that we get this glimpse. I love that God calls people like Peter. God calls people like me and you. And I want to pray for me and you right now at the end of this uh, wonderful look into God, the gospel of John, that God would help us in our belief. Lord, thank you for giving us the gospel of John, that we would believe and have life in your name. And God, I pray that, that you would help us to truly and fully believe that we would have life in your name. Lord, that you would help us, enable us 
to do everything you've called us to do. Lord, that we would repent of anything we need to repent of so that we could be restored like Peter, so that we could be used by you. Lord, help us to love you more than these. Whatever the, these are in our life, Lord, help us to love you more than that so that we can be obedient to your call. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for this time in your word together. Help us to be faithful to stay in your word, stay grounded in the truth. Lord, change us, transform us into the image of Christ. The world desperate, desperately needs that to happen today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I love you, brothers and sisters. Thanks again for joining us, joining me. I've got my Vacation Bible School shirt on. I'm, I'm uh, Pastor Not Matt. The kids are going to raise money and get to put me up through all sorts of obstacles. So that should be pretty cool. Until I see you again, which will probably be like this. Know that I love you and I'm thankful for you. God bless.